Anna, my name is Greg, 51, company director, living in Gloucestershire. I'm very frustrated and totally mistrust those who run mainstream media companies, once trusted media brands and journalists in general. This crowd should be educating the public about events and issues and how these affect our lives so they should spend time interviewing expert sources, searching public records and follow other lines of inquiry. They have an ethical responsibility to present accurate and well-balanced explanations, cover, put forward all sides of the story and give us, the public, an understanding, the implications and risks to us in the name of truth. Not biased, fear-mongering, sensationalism, searching for the gotcha question or make out our lives are surrounded by crisis when they are not. It seems a means to an end to increasing circulations, listeners, viewers and click-throughs to ramp up advertising revenues. We're now in some sort of twilight zone going along with this madness without questioning the narrative. It's testing our intelligence and gullibility. People are anxious, in fear of death via Covid, which robs us of the joys of life, as does lockdown. There's more to life than the avoidance of death, surely. If we have to carry on watching our lives pass by, in lockdown, wearing a muzzle, having no spontaneity in life, not hugging friends or family, not working at full capacity, or having to go to the pub and order and pay for your pint through an app on your smartphone, it's a no from me. It's time to reset. Resume our lives, take our chances. Life must be a life that makes life worth living. Life at the moment has a pulse, but it has no ready back glow. Now, before I start getting trolled, I'm not trying to uh, trivialise the COVID-19 situation. Thousands have been affected and many lives lost. Lives have been changed forever. Hearts have been broken. However, we need to look at the data and not follow the science. The data tells us who is at risk and takes some sort of responsibility for our own lives and others around us. We all collectively need to pull together and not live in a society where the media create division and hate. The world is a risky place and always has been and viruses have been around since dinosaurs charged around the place. It takes 10 years to find a vaccine so we have to carry on regardless. Now I'm not a journalist but I have spent a few hours on the internet looking at UK government websites for my own sanity and hopefully my findings will reassure others we are not in a state of chaos or waiting for Armageddon to smash into our lives. We just need to focus on those who are in danger and protect them whilst we all get back to, to business, back to how it was and start chipping away at this £190 billion bill we've racked up tackling the COVID-19 situation. Many SMEs and big businesses have failed, struggled or just hanging in there. One third, 34% of UK white collar employees have gone back to work, lagging far behind our European counterparts, where almost three quarters of staff, 68%, have done so, according to analysis um, from US bank Morgan Stanley's research unit, AlphaWise. UK government borrowing is at £1.98 trillion. This is the highest since 1961. OK, it does help with the world's fifth biggest economy, but it does not make good business or economic sense to have such a large, huge national debt. So, here are a few snippets of data that will make you think why it's time to get back to where we left off. Once again, this is the data talking, all lives matter, and in this world nothing can be said to be certain except for death and taxes. We have just under 68 million people in the UK, of which, sadly, 503,000 die each year. That's 42,000 deaths a week, and in general, 80% of those are over 65. Now, during COVID, this figure grew to 89. That is 16% of the UK population, accounting for 89% of COVID fatalities. These and other members of the population at danger who have comorbidity, morbidly obese or in the BAME community, we should protect 
and focus our attention on. Hospital admissions and mortality rates are the best metrics, surely. So let's look at the NHS England stats. COVID bed and COVID ventilated beds occupancy is below that that it was in early March. NHS staff absence and sickness is at its lowest, as is the number of staff off with COVID or self-isolating with family. UK COVID testing is on average 159,000 tests per day based on the last 30 days. And in total, we've tested 4.8 million tests that's picked up 25,000 cases. We now have a rolling 30 day average of 13 deaths per day versus 40, 166, 524 and 625. Don't believe me? Go over to coronavirus.data.gov.uk. It's all there. We need the mainstream media to listen to all of us and start covering issues like the unintended consequences of the lockdown, such as mental health. It's going to be a massive problem in the age groups not so much at risk of COVID. People aged between 16 to 39 apparently are 10% more at risk and we all have to, we've all neglected ourselves and drinking too much. We need to be set free. Businesses are needlessly going down the toilet, jobs are being lost, people's hopes, dreams, aspirations are being dashed, and feelings of isolation leading to unhappy uh, hearts and souls. People need fulfilled lives, lives that need living with spontaneity, where you can shake hands, read facial expressions, hug family and friends. This situation can't go on for an indefinite time. It's not living. Life is to be lived to the full, and we only get one crack at it. I'm not sure I can take another set of tricolons from the government. We stayed at home, protected the NHS and saved lives. We stayed alert, we've controlled the virus, we've saved lives. We've washed our hands, we've worn face masks and kept two metres apart. The only vaccine we need is the one to eradicate fear and anxiety spread by the mainstream media. Thank you.